you need it. Or in the, yeah, I'll just check in Google Books. I'll mute yeah. myself. Okay, and now I'm live, right? Are we all set up? Cool, I think it's ready to go. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave the meeting, Google meeting, and then Okay, so this is for Mechanical March and I'll be streaming some Rust for you. And this is not like I know a lot of Rust, so I will just go through the track and see how I would solve that, or you would see how I would solve that. Normally I'm on Exorcism more with the, the C++ track and with the Exorcism Elixir track which I just do mentoring in and uh, enjoy the exercises and the languages. But for Mechanical March, I will try something new and that will be Rust. And so I opened the Hello World exercise and uh, I think it's a good setup. On the right, you can see my, what I'm coding and here you can see what I'm reading. And the plan is that uh, we see the exercises and also that we um, I can browse the documentation with you if there's anything I need to look up that's externally and not on Exorcism. Is that all good? Can you see everything and hear me? I have a little display on the side. I can see your chat messages. And okay, let's get right into it. Hello world. So here is uh, what we have to do. And it even tells us how to test. And we could do it in the uh, editor, in the web editor, or also just do it here in Hello World RS in uh, Visual Studio Code. That's what I'm using. I'm programming in a container, so everything is set up for me. 
actually I'm on Windows, but here you see this is all some kind of Linux container. Um, okay, let's get into that. I think I already solved it. Originally, I think it is hello. Ah, it's goodbye Mars. So yeah, there is like a function. Apparently it's kind of public. Fn I think is the function keyword. The function is called hello and it will return some string that is a static lifetime specifier. Okay, we'll learn about that later. Um, okay, I made hello world and am I in the correct? Let's change the directory and try cargo test. It has to be built, so Rust is a compiled language. And it fails. <laughs> you see, uh, right, goodbye, Mars. So apparently, uh, what's up with that? I think I have had a world here. Ah, that's the test. I have to change the actual code. Hello, world. Let's try this and test it again. And yes, that worked out well. So normally I use uh, extensions to help me interact from the code with um, the exorcism um, CLI, but I have not put that into the container yet. So I will do this by hand in another terminal that you can see. It's super secret. Um, so I go into where all this is saved. Uh, Not the problem. So I think I should install all this into the containers so it is easier. So for the sake of the exercises, I will cut this short, run the test in the uh, web editor again. Ah, oh, sweet. Looks like you've solved the exercise. We're totally going to submit it. And I think that will open the whole track for us. We can mark the exercise as complete. And I would totally want to share my grandiose solution with the community. Now we can show the concepts, okay. You see, we have unlocked the function concepts and could get right into Lucian's, Lucius's lasagna exercise and that would open up uh, enumerations floating point number exercises and something about integers which in turn would unlock others um, so let's try this so about functions that would be interesting to see yeah when do we use functions we use it when we want to repeat it you we use the same code Okay, that's what I saw already. There is an FN keyword. It has curly brackets, just like C++. Main is special, as it is so often. Also take parameters. Okay, so here's the parameter and then there's the type. And uh, there's a return value. Cool. It gives us some instructions. And I think this is the point where I really should get the exercise and change it. And um, I got hello world already here and I want to have the lasagna exercise now. Um, 
I should think of a way to have this faster. Normally in my not containerized um, development, I can just fetch exercises with a few buttons. I think I'm gonna do this now with another instant of Visual Code Studio that is not running the container. So there you can select the track that is Rust and Lasagna is the exercise. This will be downloaded, but that failed. Ha, what a good start. Why is that happening? Um, so I have to do it by hand. But there you see work locally. I can just copy that. Command not found. Exorcism. Why not? I was so sure I installed everything beforehand. But now it has worked. Okay. So we close this. This is the source file we want to edit. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, the compilation takes indeed ages when it's compared to others. And you see, I have like 3.6 gigahertz, so it's not that slow. And my RAM should also be okay, but it takes a lot longer. But I was told it takes ages, but in the end you get really fancy, secure code and everything runs super fast. And uh, yeah, let's hope that's true. Um, I'm going to reduce the font size a bit. Is that still readable for everyone? Or is it too small now? I hope it's okay. If it's not, please tell me. Let's go through the instructions. Define the expected open time in minutes. So it will return some integer 32, and I think we should return 40. How is something returned in this language? Do we need a delimiter? Let's try this. Because one thing, oh, yeah, that's good. One thing that's really good about Rust is uh, when you mess up your code, it will give you really helpful hints compared to other languages. And I think we are okay with the first one. Test result, zero passed. Hmm. Okay, why it's like the doc tests? We don't run, we don't do doc tests here. But also this is zero. But hello world is one. Let's try what happens when I give it 41. Oh, it's still okay because I'm in the hello world folder. Solution, delicious lasagna, cargo test. So 41 is incorrect. But the rest seems to be okay. Ignored, ignored, ignored. That's good. I hope I don't have to forward the tests and deactivate each test by hand. Let's see what happens when I solve the second one. The remaining time in the oven. So I get like actual minutes in the oven is a parameter that is given to me. And Is that how it's done? Let's see. Ha! I can write really complicated Rust code now. Preparation time. That's the next one per layer in minutes. So it gives me the number of layers and I'm supposed to return that and by 
two. It's two minutes to prepare each layer and we have a number of layers. I would love to have this as a less magic number way, but I think in the first exercise, this is okay. Ah, oh, yeah, you also saw that I'm testing Hello World. I should pay more attention to the smart people in the chat. Okay, five are ignored, one is passed. And so I think I manually have to unignore the tests. Preparation time in minutes for multiple layers for in the oven. Why not? Let's do it like this. So now some are failing. Elapsed time in minutes for multiple layers. And this is the last function. That's OK to fail. OK, we have a number of layers. So we could just take this function. Does it have the same name? Yeah. and the actual time it has spent in the oven. And font size seem to be OK for you. So you see that I'm still in the, OK, now it's done. And I think that has some magic numbers in there. And I could now look up how to avoid that. But for the time being, I don't. So I now have to submit the exercise again. I do this in a, another terminal. Um, I use the access in the CLI for that. Submit. And now it should have happened magically that everything's there now. Let's see. Okay, nice. It looks like you're done here. It has passed. Should I get mentoring? I think mentoring is a good thing, but at the moment I don't want to have it. But let's go deeper. Oh, there's videos for that, okay. And articles, approaches, community solutions is always a nice thing to look at. Ah, look, that's what happens here. So Kairos, he or she, they define these as values. And I do prefer that, so I just steal it and make my code a lot prettier. And when I copy something from the website, it always gave me this Huge expected time in minutes, 40. Okay. Layer. Mm, I don't like that. Minutes per layer. On time. I think that's better. Let's try this. Take some time, right? But everything fine. Okay, I think now it's pretty. And I will totally opt out that too. Let's see, should give me a second iteration. Yeah, but not, I want to have mine, 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 mine. Second iteration. I think that's a lot clearer now. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to mark it as complete. And now we unlock three concepts. We finish the functions. And I want to see more. Enumerations, integers. Let's start with integers. It's called assembly lines. Oh yeah, you can do some readability thing here. I like that. In C++, you can do it with an apostrophe and here you have an underscore. 
Okay, that looks clear. Let's download the exercise. It should be here. Assembly line is the name of the exercise. And now I go there. Okay, not the same arrow again. Uh, is it still okay for you? Can you do that? I recommend enabling Rust official linter Clippy with a VS Code setting Rust analyzer check command. It's checked by default. Clippy will enabling linter as well. Ah, that might help. I love a linter. Mm, how do I do that? Rust analyzer. Do we do that in Visual Studio Code? It's the analyzer here. see that. It's always good to have a linter with a strong opinion on what you should do, at least for me. And what else do we have? Rust and linter check by cow. Where's that option? I would like to have that. Target, unset tests. Command, oh, this is check. And it should be check command. Oh, Clippy. Like that. Let's see what happened. And something I wrote. Is that all? Okay, it's not complaining for this. Let's see what happens when I do the assembly line. In this exercise, we'll be writing code. That's good. Okay, there is some success rate. Calculate the production rate per hour. I thought this is for integers, isn't it? That looks like I have to have some floating numbers. And it will return some float. So. What are we doing here? I think that would be some kind of switch function or if else. Should I Google how to do if else with, yeah. Rust by example, that sounds good. That's how I do it. Let's Google everything. Speed. It's, I think, U is unsigned, so I don't have to. Less than four. What else do we have? Five to eight. Should I give an. Um, some kind of error when it's more than 10. Let's pretend the user would not do that. Else if more than, if speed is more than eight, and then the else would do five to eight. I think that's not good. Let's not do this. If I would just say like uh, else, everything else, then also, ah, 
let's do errors when it comes to errors. So this would be everything in between. And it has a 90% success rate. Return. Many times. Production rate per hour. 221. 221. Times speed, right? And this is more failing here, 37. And I think here it's I don't like that a lot. Let's test that. Cargo test. Aha, aha, aha. This match type. Okay, so it's giving me you. Do I have to cast that? Nope. But you see, it's a lot quicker now that it's complaining a lot quicker than compiling it first because I messed it up. Ah, okay, here one speed is missing. Nope. No implementation. Float to you and date. So why is it like asking for me to do this? Note that the return value, should I cast that? Did I miss anything in the... Are you learn two concepts? Maybe, maybe, maybe I should do the floating points first. Because apparently they're not connected, you see that here, but I need some floating point knowledge before I can do the others. Oh, it's also assembly line. Okay, so that's the same exercise. Hmm. Let's cast. Conversion. Either one has to be converted into another type. Yeah, thank you. And how do I cast? Into. Int into. Mm -hmm. That's probably not what I want. Rust. Cast a float. How do people cast here? S, is it just? Unsafe, that sounds not good. Is it all, can I just say S something? Speed S. It's not pretty yet. First, I want to have it working. Oh, it's compiling. That's okay. Good. Should I make it pretty now or later? Nah. Let's have the second point first. Okay. And uh, where was I? Exercise. Which one? Assembly lines in progress. And now calculate the number of working items per minute. So I have a rate per hour. Is it just divide by 60? And this returns a float. That should be no problem, right? Expected one of eight possible tokens. Tokens. Is 
Ah, oh, it wants to be cast now to U32. Can it do that by itself? Expected one off production rate per hour. Did I delete something? Ah, return, return. New 32 and is that how you cast? Ah, oh, okay. Maybe like this. I'm pretty sure like real Rust people are like, now what is he doing? That looks so ugly. I wonder if that's also the way people go into the Elixir and uh, C++ exercises, just like changing stuff till it works and then they're happy when it works and then they commit to the um, Okay, tests. Can I just uh, ignore all the tests? No, ignore all the ignored tests. Okay, now we have all the tests. Okay, they all ran through. So anyone in the chat, is this good? <laughs> is that how you would do it in Rust? Because I think it looks kind of pretty, but also maybe that's stupid. I'm disconnected from the chat. Uh, let's see, because I have a little iPad here that tells me what happens in the chat. and disconnected. Hmm. Reconnect. What's wrong here? Going great. Okay, so just my chat is disconnected here. Oh, I wonder why. Let's do the next exercise then. Dig deeper. Does it have the ah? I have still have to commit. Let's see the assembly line. That's now submitted. Oh, that's fast. 20 to 30 seconds. No suggestions. I think that could be a lot prettier. Okay. Um, let's see how I already forgot. How did that work? Oh, it's just some const. Okay, let's give it, I think there's three set points where, um, where do I get back into the exercise? Here, one to four, five to eight, nine to 10. What is it? All. So the full success limit will be four. I 
XXX limit will be something like eight. And then the speed is, I think that looks better. Uh, let's say speed. Maybe I should make this uppercase. Full success limit. I don't like that, that a lot of repetition. Can I have like an if statement after? So basically all I want is that failure rate. Okay, now I have the failure rate per hour and I need the production per hour. Is that still working? Nope. Not implementation. What? Okay, apparently there is no, no casting at all. You have to be specific about everything. Cannot convert your age to I32. But the linter has not complained yet. Match a range pattern if you prefer. So for some reason, my tablet does not like the Twitch chat anymore. And I now have to switch. I don't have a second monitor where I can professionally see everything, but I can give him a light. Ha, I forgot about that. Now I should be a bit more visible. Match. Yes, I do like that. But first, okay, this is passing again. Match speed. Uh, zero to do we have to have the like this? Mm -hmm. 
Is it inclusive or not? Let's see if it behaves like I think it should. And there was an equal sign here. Ah, oh, maybe the equal sign is for inclusive. Is there an exclusive range? Mm, maybe not. Okay. Uh, return say seven. And the default would be just like this match all, I think. Return and Let's see if that's the same. No. Is it a fall through? So if this is succeeding, then this will not happen. Then it doesn't matter if Previous error. Multiple patterns overlap. Mm -hmm. You likely meant to write manually mutually exclusive ranges. Yes, I did but I don't care because this one succeeds first. Why is that? Why can't do that? <laughs> Why not? Hmm. I don't like that. And I want the linter arrow to go away. It felt unnecessary to to do something like this. Why is it complaining? Now I have to use a semicolon. No. Cannot be referenced in patterns. Because this is const. Maybe that's why I cannot add something. Yeah, it would be nice to have it running right here. I wonder why. Normally, it runs quite nice when you have it in a container and everything. Why can't I do that? Let's see if the community solutions have any interesting thing to say about that. Yeah. So this is the same thing I had, but it is not using, this is magic numbers. We don't want that. And still magic. 
here's a base rate, still the same. Here the success rates are, that's nice, but still, still, did someone do that the way I expect it to be? Okay, this one is a bit better. Clippy, okay. Yeah, let's do it like this, match speed. It's still very verbose, verbose. High success limit. Da, 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 ten. Is it still correct? Hmm. I don't really like that, but judging from the other solutions. This is probably the, the Rust way. Make little const, ah, I should make it const as well. Hmm. I don't need that anymore. Okay, we need three. Is that auto format? Or mod document? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. I think I am more happy with that solution. I don't really like that I have to repeat myself here or introduce a new intermediate variable. Let's submit this and ask for mentoring. Okay, this is the second one. Get mentoring. Learning Rust from a C++ perspective. Background. Background. So the metric can see what I know, that I'm not a total beginner in programming, just in Rust. I don't like the code in line 11 and 10. Three hours. 
that's longer than we probably stream. Okay. Um, yeah, so far I'm okay, happy with that. What now? You've learned two concepts. Show me more. Methods, enumerations. That's so many exercises. Let's see what it has to offer. Tech unions. That might be too small for you to read. Okay, that's pretty much like C would do it. Let's see where this is going. Semi structured blocks. Derive, so you can clone it, partial equation and debug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's get this exercise real quick. And where is it? Here is it. Semi structured logs. Okay, so the log levels are already given. Aren't used yet. Okay. Return error of stack overflow. Return a message. Info message. It will return a stream. So I need some string concatenation, concatenation. So when this, is it a match again? Let's match. Match level. If level is Block level info return info how many are that warning and error warning If this expect the log level, this should never happen. Let's see if the compiler sees that. Okay, string cognition and own string on the left. I do not own that. 
Okay. Is that the way? The next side doesn't tell me anything about this. Do I really need that? Failed. What is failing? Panicked, not implemented. Ah, okay. Info. I wonder where, if there's something where I can just return the match and don't have to write return here. Does that work? Yeah, this passes. Let's unignore the tests. Okay, can I do that? Nice, I like that. That looks clean. We can move that, I think. I wonder if this is the way to pass around strings. Oh, thanks. I don't have to write that. The last expression in a function is the return value. I don't even have to write return. Let's try that. That's like in Elixir. Neat. Okay, that makes it a lot cleaner. Um, how about this? Do I have to do that? Trusty Stack Overflow. Apparently, I need to own them. Join. That seems nice. There's concat. Let's go with concat. I like that. Concat. Hmm. <laughs> Let's not go with that. <laughs> Okay, now I have the problem in the other direction. Okay, then this is the way.
thanks for the chat mentoring. That makes sense. I heard a lot of things about the famous bordering and this is the first time this happens. Okay, apparently I also have to own the stuff I put onto the heap. That's a new thing for me. But I think the rest is good. Let's submit that. No files to submit. Um, now it's submitted. Processing. In the meantime, let's see how other people solve that. Sixty-nine stars. What happened there? <gasps> Format. Match, match. Right. Oh, that's double the work. Wait. Oh, that's a helper function? No. Ah, okay. It implemented its own formatting. That's too much for me for the third exercise. Display trade. Okay. But I can use the formatter. Thanks to the chat, Mr. Sabuhudo. Yes, I think that looks cleaner. But it's also repetitive. But okay, let's keep it, let's keep it that way. Should be two x two. This is with a similar format. Basics. Show more concepts. How much time do I have left? Ten minutes. Mastered. Then it's green. Okay. How does that look now? You see. Oh, I'm live. I can watch myself. And I can watch some advertisement. But I wanted to go to the 12 and 23. Yeah, I got a new one. Now it's Rust. Two more to go. I think I will not be able to do that in 10 minutes. What? I just did that, right? Isn't that already published? Huh. What's happening here? Is my internet too slow? Am I streaming too hard? Ding. Oh, look at that. I'm being mentored. Return is optional. 
we have learned that. You can actually you can optimize a pattern with a range pattern. Which one is that? The assembly line. Okay, we don't need a return. We don't need a return. We don't need a return. And let's format the document. What has changed? Found nothing. In line 20. What's different now? That was working beforehand. Because here we have return. And why do I sometimes have to do the semicolon? Was that the auto formatter? No, who did that? Do I need that? Now it's complaining. Okay, so, so apparently it is needed sometimes, but not always. What? That was the difference. I removed it here and it was okay. Does it stop being a statement? If you remove return, you need to return the semicolon as well. Ah, if you remove return, okay. So no, it's nice. Only this thing is not what I want it to be. Um, Try this again. So I really like mentoring because sometimes they, they ask you to do things you, you knew you could do, but you did not. And, I could also mix and match that, right? Yes. What happens if I drop that? Does it still compile? No. So it's always inclusive, but I want to have exclusive. Inclusive range. Plus. Oh yeah, they dropped the, this one. Oh, it's experimental. I should read the whole thing. The Rust Unstable Book. Interesting. Yes. Let's make it unstable.
now I should rename that because now it is five. Note, unused attributes by default. Ah, it should be in the root module. Okay. I thought so. Like on top, so everyone can see that. May not be used on the stable release channel. Okay. It's not as easy. I need to install the nightly compiler. Maybe I don't want to go there. It's not really pretty, is it? I think it's a bit better if I mix it, so I have to don't I don't have to repeat that. I think I might just okay. So now I got a complaint because there is a pattern overlap and it also gives me because this is intended i do want to have that what one how can i switch that off Don't warn. <laughs> How can I switch it off? Allowed. Allowed. Help. Allow. Why is it still complaining? I said that's okay. Do not warn. Huh. Ah, the bang. I need the bang. Can I do it like this? The chat is very helpful. Thank you, thank you. Ha! That's nice, right? I feel that's good. Let's format this. Cool. I'm happy with that. I submit it. No files have changed. Ah, oh, wrong folder. And assembly line. I was. Always good to have an experienced opinion here. OK, 
Good. And help from the chat. And I think this is it. And I will continue to continue to do other things. That was fun. Thanks for being there and uh, giving me hints, although I didn't read them all on time. I need to work on that. But uh, that was fun. We worked through some exercises together, or I did, and you watched me. What did we do? We finished four exercises, and that means I'm only one exercise away of getting the... The batch, no, the triple progress. Here it is, two are living, okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you for that. And uh, let's see, maybe I do this again next week. So see you soon, bye.